Getting ready for the traditional haka from the Black Ferns. It's called Na Mamaku Aotearoa Na Pania Papa. Imposed by Fetu Tipuwai and put together for the Black Ferns in 2002. led there by Aroha Savage and Renee Wycliffe. Fantastic way to get yourself G'd up for a test match. Cherie Trumbull, referee for tonight's game. Something special about the challenge like that, Mark. I um, was so lucky and actually to have the game here in Rotorua. And to KT, it seems like the crowd down there really enjoyed it as well. Oh, yes, indeed, Willie. I can tell you from our personal experiences down here, any hug will either be the, the men or the ladies. That was outstanding. And then we've got a great chair and I've got the respect from the Wallaroos. So I'm sure this is going to be an explosive kickoff. Here we go. to it the first test since 2010 between these two nations taken cleanly there by Ormsby who goes for the distance good take by Ali but knocked on by Robertson and yeah, just early nerves there from Casey Robertson another experienced player for 80 games to her credit for Canterbury in the women's provincial championship and she just had a little peep didn't she she had a look who was coming and uh, and just lost concentration there Nice first touch from Tui Ormsby as well. Deep set here from the Wallaroos too. Look like they might run this ball here. Mel. Fine. I hope they do. Nita Maynard, halfback for the Wallaroos. Engagement prior to the set, okay? 
It'll be interesting to see who wins this contest. Some of these Australian players haven't played for six weeks. Big drive there from the Black Ferns, but they're penalised. Quick tap. Wasn't taken on the mark. Well, wow, look at the intent Number of the Australians. Kautanana alluded that they might run the ball from the set piece in the scrum, but they got the penalty and wanted to go on with it. Referees brought them back, but boy, they're here to play. I can tell you, Willie, just looking at these two teams' sideline, the New Zealand team is a lot bigger physically than this Australian team, so that might be a secret why they want to run this big pack, big black pack around. Well, that didn't show in the stat with the weights of the, the two forward packs, respectively. So, Burrows to throw in. Nice throw, too, off the top ball. Just lost her footing there. Ormsby. Recycled nicely to Clough. Good blow over ball, but attacked at the breakdown by the Black Ferns. Hands or hands black. To keep it going, Australia. Once again, the Black Ferns attack the breakdown, and it is a turnover. Good ball to rule. Who uses her good boot to get distance. The pressure on for Hewson. Charge down. High pace already. Cleaned up by Maynard. Brown has to act as half-back. Oh, taken up but driven back by the big defence of New Zealand. And they've won the ball again. Navave to, to Ohadi Fox. Both teams wanted to get in there. Yeah, there were two crucial turnovers there for me, Mel. The first one was Linda Aitunu. And we should identify her because, as you mentioned in your intro, normally at number eight, she's playing on the open side flank tonight. And it was just brilliant. Here it is. Aituna there in the headgear. Straight up over the ball. And KT, that's a classic sevens play. Oh, yes, indeed. Getting there, had all right. You can see the number of Wallaroos there to blow out. They didn't do it effectively because this lady on screen had a technique down pat. So good to see Aituna back in the black jersey. She's in play for the 15s team. It's 2010. So, ball spills out the back, and Maynard has to clean it up. Schusen. Good kick over the top of Winiata, and dribbles over the sideline. Oh, that's great play from Australia. Terrific awareness of where the space was as well. The scrum was solid. They cleared it. And Houston using that educated 34-year-old boot to clear it into the black fence half. Clean at the front for Blackwell. And they drive it up. Adi Namata takes it off the back of the mall. It's not tidy though, so they have to dig in there. Scrum. Unplayable, it looks like. Namata Adi Namata, her debut now, so no doubt. That'll give her a little bit of confidence as well. Just wanting to get the ball in hand, wanting to get a first chance to run at the opposition. Just got a little bit isolated there, and then players not controlling their body weight. Rawinia uh, Everett, number six tonight, usually plays a lot. Australian bench looking on. A lot of pressure going on here. There's a lot of pressure, is, is right. I tell you what, we questioned whether this Australian team would be up for it. There's no doubt about that. Maintaining Opening gap five minutes. The set. the set piece has been very good. Is Schwalga there? Uniata, John Schwalga's sister. A bit better looking than him. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> it's no <in a> contest. <laughs> So Australia take it up with Smith, and that's a good little run. They've got great technique at the blow over there, Australia. This is Schwalga. Powerful little run. Mania gives it up to her open side, Smith, but body position's a bit high. 
New Zealand's held it up. It is a mall and it's oh. black ball. Sabritsky, Nafatali, the first five there, just ripping the ball off. And what happened was uh, Smith got, actually, she had a couple of players in front of her, so she actually slowed down. And that's when Sabritsky, Nafatali just went straight in, held her up. And look at this. What? Firstly, the break from Smith getting outside of Itunu. Schwalger came along, and this is where it is. Just two players in front, and then she slowed down. And look at the New Zealand defence straight in. And good knowledge of the rules as well. There's the captain, Fatma Selic. Roach! Watching with interest. Set! So, waiting for the scrum. Well, six and a half gone. Six and a half gone, KT. And the New Zealand women's team have hardly touched the ball. And when they have, it's been in a bad position where they've kicked it. So this is a really good set piece for them, isn't it? Yeah, they did get that stable scrum. You can see, we, like you said, they haven't had much position. But so they're trying to get that early hit. And don't let Australia beat them to the punch. That girl want the ball in her hand. She's set quite wide. Hoodie on Emmanuel. She can fly if she gets an opportunity on the outside. 62% territory for the Australians. In the opening seven minutes. Early goal. Early. Casey Robertson takes a quick tap. Goes straight ahead. That's a better breakdown ball for the Black Ferns, but where's the halfback? And here's a pick and go from Nati Adi Namate. Another penalty. The Australian tackler did not release. And it was Smith. Like Could a be a problem there with the contact, but. Uh, She's done well, hasn't she, the open side flank? A good contest between her and Aitunu. Well, you've noticed her. So, a bit of ping pong with the boot. Look at that, there's Robertson. Big and strong. Clear out was brilliant as well from Everett. She really moved bodies. Blind side flanker for New Zealand. Ball goes to the middle of the line out. Bit messy, but retain possession. The Black Ferns. Here's the Brits with Nafatale. Good short ball there to Aitunu. Gotta get faster, ruck ball. That's Liva there. And the ball has spilled forward. So out of jail again, Australia. Muniata. She's got a chaser coming on. Forced to kick. Great chase from. Wallaroos. What a terrific kick as well. And the kick is only as good as the chase, and you did right, Mel. They closed in on Salika Winiata. Well, they know how dangerous she is because, of course, 2013, she won the Sky Sport Fans Try of the Year. It was unreal. Well, coast to coast, wasn't it? <laughs> second test in Hamilton against England in the last second of play. So... Zealand have the ball from bad throw from Australia. Box edge, box kept. Goes high and Haynes has to take it, and she does. Bit of a dummy. Nice little run, but munched. It's a big hit. Good pick and go from Schwalger. It's good so far. It's a test match between the Wallaroos and New Zealand. Ormsby. To Denison. It's making a couple of metres at a time, Australia. Me skill. That one didn't go forward for sure. Denison. Winner is really putting the Black Ferns under pressure here with the amount of position. Campbell. She's kept it though. So they continue to attack on the right hand side and the ball gets up for Brown New Zealand yep they've turned it over that was Manuel who got in there once again ladies in the yellow jersey have got it body position too high there for Australia well one person that stood out throughout that whole phase of play was Everett a winner Everett the number six for New Zealand her outstanding defensive work. She's the one, you, it was your words, not mine. She munched her, right? <laughs> she absolutely yeah, crushed Haynes yeah, initially. Right. She's there with the bit of headgear on. And have a look at this. Don't go there again, Haynes. You'll get some of that <laughs> in here. Time's up. Love it. 
you're oh, one, that's terrific. You're, you're one to love the physicality, I know that, Mel. But for me, this Australian team were quite organised for that passage of play. They held it for a number of phases and quite organised. And I think these big hits in New Zealand team, I know they're trying to jolt the ball off. They did turn it over there at the end with Hirian Emmanuel doing some good work. Check out that black eye. Look at that. That's... That's an egg. To your Ohari Fox. Oh. What's that? Test rugby, Mel. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> You've dished out a couple of those, please. Yeah. <laughs> no? Mel will be in the makeup room right now if you have one of those, <laughs> KT. You couldn't get in there because you took two hours. Oh, please. <laughs> yep. Won't hurt now. Not in the middle of a test match. No, that's actually, it's actually the hooker there. Nata Aire Namate. Oh, she's on debut. There's no way she's coming off. Yeah, we'll be one to remember. So Australia have another opportunity to string some attack together. Fine. Set. Used a lot of phases so far. Pulled at the back there. Good work by Maynard still to get it out. There's Brown coming around from the right wing. Ball spills out, untidy. Like what I've seen from the Australians. Backs up early. The whole decision-making process has been good. The set piece in particular, the scrum, was great there. And now they're bringing in players like Brown from the Back left wing, or the right wing, rather. Shot hold. So, they're going to go for the three points. There she is, just coming Back in. Line up early. Then they don't answer. But I just like the attitude of the Australians at the moment. They're wanting to play running rugby. They're wanting to use their skills. And KT, you mentioned the wind earlier on. How much is this going to assist the Australian kicker? Yeah, Ashley Houston, yeah. She just puts, has to put it out to the left a little bit and she'll bring it round, around, but length sh shouldn't be a problem. She's already shown that she can time the kick. But it's an interesting setup, Willie, that the uh, Australians have from the scrum they put the first half right in behind like it's in a pocket and then they attack from there quite unusual so Houston she looked good in the warm-up and that was a beauty the Wallaroos leading the world champion Black Ferns early on three points to nil well they've dominated all of the stats that are in front of us territory 68 percent possession 54 and minutes in opposition 22 as well so that's the reason why they're ahead by three new zealand just need to calm down and get some ball so britsby nafatali gets it underway again with a nice deep kick that's taken care of and returned with interest good use of the wind that's been the turnovers, hasn't it? I know Lavave is on, on debut as well, the, the second round for New Zealand. She lost the ball forward. What's the first instinct for the Australians? Get down to the New Zealand field. Nice throw in there to the front. Blackwell organising the mall. Ball's out. Here's Rule. She's made plenty of metres. Cox Edge. Black Ferns have got the penalty. Robertson frees the ball up. It's going backwards. And so the referee will take it back. Of course, these teams play for the Laurie O'Reilly Memorial Trophy. Of course, Laurie O'Reilly, from whom it's named, he was a coach and selector from 1989 to 1993, and he was huge Captain. in terms of developing women's rugby in this country died on the 15th of the 1st in 1998, aged just 55. They first contested it in 1998. Well, you got coached by Mel and um, you had nice things to say about him earlier today. Oh yeah, he's one of the reasons I made the Black Ferns in 1996. He really, really believed in you and gave you confidence. A great guy. Once again, they go to the front, the Black Ferns. It's a money ball, four takes. Louise Blackwell. There's a little bit of a run here from Sabretzi. Nafatali. Rule. Wide ball out now to Winniata. A bit of space for Ali. Oh, good tackle, Houston. Cox edge. And there's a turnover from Houston. 
great work, the Wallaroos. And Ormsby. That's a, they go over the sideline first. Well, they've certainly done their homework, have they, Wallaroos? They just shut that down immediately. And Houston, it was copybook. It had to be made on Ali down that left-hand flank. Right around the boot laces. Houston's having a terrific night with the boots and then on defence. So Burrows, once again, Australia lose a line out. Cleaned up there, Everett. Down the blind side. Nancy Adi Namate. She's given it off to Lavave. Once again, the hooker gets involved. Pushing out the small meters. Out to the backs now. Here's Manuel. Beautiful hit. She keeps going forward. Not enough numbers here, the Black Ferns, but they managed to keep position. And they've got the penalty. Just going in off their feet. It's making the ball a little bit slow. Another good hit from a Forte or Heidi Fox. Yeah, the media roll asks the referee. Captain. Get their hands out. She's going to have a chat. Captain. Far too many penalties happening. I got it. Happening at the breakdown, okay? Yeah. Your players are reaching through the ruck. They're there to ruck and they need to be onside, okay? Yeah. You've got to get the discipline. Talk to them. Well, that's where they're frustrating the New Zealanders is because they're slowing the ball down. The delivery of the possession for the Black Ferns has been slow. And the one that's really been a nuisance is the halfback, Nita Maynard. Hard to believe she's only 21, but pound for pound, she has just dived into the rucks there, and she's the reason why they gave away the first penalty. Hands on the ball. And I suppose when it comes to that, KT, it just means that you've got to ask your forwards to actually start clearing out a lot quicker, don't you, and lower. Yeah, you've just got to be a bit more effective. I think the Black Ferns have been guilty of just going to the ball. They need to go through it, clean out properly, and people need to know their, ro ro uh, know their roles. The halfback's not there. Whoever's up next can clear the ball. One thing for me, Mel, we saw it from the line out, the turnover, and here it is. Look at this, the running line there of Manuel. She's big and powerful, and here she is. Look at this, diving in there. You can't go there, and they clear her out. Straight away, she's up to her feet. Yeah, they've been affecting the one-off runners effectively too. I was about to say earlier that uh, from the line out where they won the ball, Nata Aringamate gets her hands on the ball a couple of times and she fed it up to Lavave as well. Good to see the two young debutants working in tandem, but more importantly, giving them some confidence. Absolutely. Coxedge from Canterbury. And a good little kick, looks it, and it is over. So. The Black Ferns make it even, Stevens. It's now three all. With just about 18 minutes gone in this test match. Beats the first player. Fine. Oh, another steal. The Wallaroos really contesting everything. There's Smith. Play on. All loose. Leave it black. Australia still have it. Scrum. Uh, you mentioned her brother on a number of occasions, Mel. On the Arta Schwalga. She'll be getting the pats on the back. From her girl, from her, her teammates, rather. Here, look at this. Straight in. There she is, for prop running in. There was separation, then she went straight in on the ball and won it. Yeah, the lines of the Black Fern support players, the Fords, are just a little bit shallow. They need to anticipate that the ball carrier is going to make it to the advantage line and beyond because they have been so far. Fine. Set. Oh, 
That's a better scrum from Australia. Maynard gets a good ball out to Ormsby. Campbell. A good direct hit. This time, New Zealand get one. Well, it was a good scrum. Ormsby was there, but the, the support from the loose forwards were just too slow. Robertson was there. Ituna was there. Was there. As quick as you like. Sherman Stowers watching on. His partner there, Katrina, has been a black fern, but she's pregnant. So congratulations to them. What's a baby or a World Cup in France? Go for the baby. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> Short line out from New Zealand, and it's a beauty. Good hit from Aituno, and she takes the hole. Off their feet again, New Zealand. What's going to happen here? Number one. We talked about that too many penalties off her feet. And it's a yellow. Schwelga is gone. Once it becomes a wrap, no hands. And that's what you want, is you want to get over the advantage line. So you give it to some of the experienced players like Aitunu. Set phase was good from the line out. Beautiful clean ball, and Aitunu hit that brilliantly up and over the advantage line. The Australians, and they're trying to play spoiling tactics by just slowing the ball down. And on that occasion here, look at the pace and the angle that she ran at. Stepping off the left, there's Schroger coming in, and then the ball pops back the Australians' way. Lineout has been a strong feature of New Zealand's game in this match so far. They do the drive. Oh, nice little pick off the back by Nati Arenamate. Good work. Goes out to Sabrexby Nafatale. Going wide this time now. The Black Ferns. Play on, the back. Oniata. Still have the ball there. Ali. Tidies it up. 15 on 14, Everett. Nice little spin. It's holding so far. Fox Edge. Up to Robertson. To Brixby Nafatale. It's a fend out, gets through the hole. Hard to take down. Fox Edge goes on the blind side, holds the ball up, gives it to Winiata. Recycled on the rack. Oh, great intention. Nice flow. Aaron Smith is there to shut it down to the open side flanker for Australia. Isn't it amazing? You send somebody to the bin and all of a sudden the ball starts to get recycled a lot quicker. What number? Because the Australians know Eight? they can't infringe. And a brilliant clear out in front of us as well by Honey Hidamir. Had to be made. This was the tackle and uh, Hidamir came in off the wing, but this is the last part of it. Good play, KT. Oh, yes, indeed. And just look at the injection there from fullback by Salika Winiata. Just a little touch there, just showing how good and effective she could be creating space. But the Black Ferns have a little bit of a problem here. The number eight, Casey Robinson, just going down on her knee. So hopefully she's all right. Oh, they're the back, sorry. Click it in. Oh, there are the stats that we're talking about. It's very heavily favoring the Australians earlier on. The New Zealanders now starting to get some possession and territory. There's the missed tackles. Time and there's a coach that hurts the most too. Gold ball. Oh, a number of handling errors for New Zealand, but they're probably playing a little bit more Hold ambitious the ball. Hold rugby. The ball. Hold the ball. Hold the ball. Come on. Gee, there's a lot of noise there. Cozy here. No, yeah. Down. I'm listening to the rest. Thank you. <laughs> Let's have it again. So, Louise Burrows. Getting on side with the referee. Ball goes up. Lift is ineffective, and so the Black Ferns have come through the middle. I think it was Aituno. Oh, that was close to being a try. No hand. The right hand side there. Not even Coxie no, no knew what was happening. It was that fast. Ball goes out wide here. Picked up by Hedeman, there's a big fin, beautiful ball out to Manuel, straightens up, and finally, the media rule is over for the New Zealand side. What a try. Wow, 
That's her 12th try, 26th match for the New Zealand captain. And it all came from this Australian era. It was their line out. They didn't control it. And I'm picking that it was actually Blackwell. She's been the architect in the line out there and she just got it. Couldn't believe her luck here. Yeah, look at that, it's just fallen brilliantly for her. She went ever so close. They had another dive again. Ratuni picked it up. It's actually the hooker, Aringa Mate. And then the backs got involved. And this is the class from so many sevens players here. Firstly, Hidemia. Manuel was there. Good team try, KT. Yes, indeed. And you're right. Well, it was that long pass out to Huriana Manuel. Sitting at centre. She picked it up, gave it to Honey Hidemi. He wrapped around in the last pass there from the New Zealand captain to the Black Ferns captain. First try ends at media rule. Well done. Yeah, Midia Rule, I mean, she was playing when I was playing, yet she's only 25 years old. Debuted as an 18-year-old. You taught her everything she knows, eh, Mel? Uh, no. <laughs> she was one of those girls that was talented at every sport. Everything she touched, she was great at. Well, unfortunately, the conversion is not successful, so... Eight points to three, New Zealand lead Australia. Uh, just the impact there, of course, Australia down to 14 players. We've got to remember that. And it came from the set piece, the line out. And so Schwalger in the bin, and it's cost them five. Vakalahi is on for the Australian uh, Wallaroos, just replacing, I think, uh, Danielle Misko, who's off for blood. I'm interesting to see how she goes. She's been in the Middle East with the Army for eight months, only recently got back. So, short ball from Ormsby, but taken cleanly there. By the hooker, Nati Aruna Mata. So, Robertson back in the action. Aitunu, great work there at the breakdown. Wall gets amongst it with the Fords. They're all lined up on the blind here in New Zealand. Oh, close. So close for Haynes. She would have been gone as well. That would have been their first five-pointer. She read it brilliantly. Terrific awareness of where the pass was going to come. And look at that. Oh, that was try time. It was really the only option she had because... Eight goal. I think you need to go off. Because like they were going to get a bit of a run. It's actually Trisha Brown. Apologies. The right winger. Time's on. You can see there just Liz Putter coming in the front row for Butler as they go off, obviously, with the uh, one man down. Australia do here. They take it forward. Good. Taking them on up front. Linia Meters made a good little hit from Smith too. Clean ball. Tui. Ormsby Tui. Takes it in. No problem. Yeah, Robertson on her feet from New Zealand. Good scrap there from Robertson, the number eight for New Zealand, getting in and wrapping up the ball. But I like what, what Australia did, actually. It was good recycled ball. And what about the run from Patu to start us off? They will take the hit. Goal very will take powerful the hit, but indeed. No after. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. Nearly over half this Australian team are Kiwis. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they're playing so well. <laughs> a great attacking option there. You can see it left and right. Need a good scrum here, Australia. Ormsby's on the right, Campbell's on the left. We need to get the scrum right first. Black scrum. Black scrum. Turn over. Yeah. Zealand, great work there. Congratulated themselves. Captain, hold your five. 
have another look at this. Well, of course, they are down to seven. You can see they've got no flanker on that side there, and that's where the ball was coming through and getting trapped. That was the problem. Straight. Okay, you're on an angle. Straight. straight. Here we go. And a yeah, number of resets. Thank you. So far. Well, Linda Aitunu and Great. Robertson are talking to each other, so I'm interested to see what that what happens here. Set. So it's an eight nine. Coxedge. Chase coming through from New Zealand. Haynes, once again, cleans it up, gets it to Houston, who's got a massive kick. Ali, knock on from Ali. Good result for the Wallaroos. Uh, if the stats are true, and uh, Ashley Houston is 34 years young at fullback for Australia, what an incredible player she is. The op she had little, very few options when she got the ball from Haynes. And she just put it in the air, and look how high it went. Ali couldn't catch it. And Australia once again find themselves on attack. Yeah, she's definitely classy from New South Wales. Wing fullback. Went to the 2010 Rugby World Cup, where Australia ended up third. So once again, New Zealand pushing that Australian scrum back. Was, oh, I turn out. <laughs> Too high there. Everett, she's all over it. And New Zealand get it. Uh, Maynard might be checking the uh, chiropractor tomorrow. She might be going spending a bit of time on the table because Ituna eats halfbacks up for breakfast. She felt that as well. <laughs> Look at her, she's trying to just walk it off. But boy, oh boy, what happened in front of UK T? It was a beauty. Yep, oh, yes, indeed. Linda Raituni, well, she's known for the big defence. You can see there, just cut her in half. But she really does set the tone, doesn't she? Linda Raituni. This, this uh, black scrum really is imposing itself on this Wallaroos team at the moment. Well, they've just got to last for another 30 seconds or so, and they'll be back to their full complement, Australia. No, 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 no. Maynard is one of the debutants for the Wallaroos. And Danielle Miskill tight head proper's back on, which means Patu has gone back to the bench. Crouch. Find. Set. Nice. Once again, Robertson to Coxedge. And Hardy had a mat. Beats the first two. It's a clean ball for New Zealand. Recycled. And Levave. This time Coxedge goes for the kick. Houston allows it to bounce. Winiata. Good chase. That's a knock on. She tried to release it because she was on the ground, but unfortunately released it forward. First mistake she's made. 30 minutes. And uh, <laughs> good option, but it comes from a strong set piece from New Zealand. Good scrum. A Canterbury combination of Robertson and Cox Edge. They know each other's play so well, so it's... Skirt and Schwalg is just about to get her boarding pass to come back on. Crouch! Fine! Mup, keep a gap. While we keep a gap. wait for the reset there, we talk about Cox Edge and Robertson and their combination will... Cox said she's one of the most prolific scorers in NPC rugby. 377 first class points. That's fourth on the all time list. Fine. Set. Nice. Good ball for Roll. Does it in and out. Stopped in the middle of the field. Levave, good pass back into Everett. Picked up by Te Ohadi Fox. Ford Pack doing plenty of work for New Zealand. Ball out in front, here's the Brixby, Nafatale. It's a little run, ball in one arm. Still, they have the ball, the Black Ferns. 
good hands by Nata Ade Damate. Pops it up to Lavave. Tindu attack that blind side with a little kick through. Hit him in, chases. Australia, the ball back to Ormsby. And there's no other option but to kick it out. Good rugby from both teams. The Black Ferns starting to get some rhythm and some sequences and phases together. And Australia withheld them. Houston was actually involved in the ruck earlier, so they passed it back. And not as much meterage from Ormsby, but nonetheless, they've managed to actually hold off the Black Ferns and get back to 15 players. Yeah, there's Schwagli. I'm not sure, Willie, though, about the option from Coxes with that little kick over the top. I think they had the advantage here. They needed to go a bit wider. I think if you had Honey hit me on your outside, you'd give it to her. Once again, another driving maul. Taken out by Coxedge. Wool. Nice ball back to hit Thumps off the first one, but Ormsby hangs on. And look at that, I think. Australia close to turning it over. Black advantage. Gold roll. This is a great speed enough for Tully continuing with that little kick through. Roll out board. This is just about in front. Well, it is in front, isn't it? Good opportunity for Cox Edge. Shot well, they bring in Hitomi. Yeah. Honey Hitomi into play as much as they can on their blind side wing. Yeah. And that's where the original yeah. penalty was okay. created. I like the little grubber kick through as well. That's a great option to use in these conditions. You can't fault the Australians' defence tonight, KT. No, Willie has been very committed, hasn't it? And they have to play on that advantage line as they are doing, especially at ruck time. They're getting up, trying to close down the space and time and opportunity for this Black Ferns because they know if they do, the Black Ferns have got players that will cut into shreds. So they have to play really on the lot. That's perfectly put through. The Black Ferns are now 11 plays three ahead of Australia. Mal, can I just say that um, we're lucky here in New Zealand that we get to cover the, the women's sevens, obviously, and we get to see the NPC or the women's NPC as well. Um, but just the skill level that, in my view, in the last couple of years, it's increased tenfold. The skill level of catching, passing, and just simple things like that, penalty goals. I know a couple of times I've seen penalties taken when they don't even get off the ground, but nowadays it's incredible the skill level that uh, these women actually play with. It's always been women with plenty of skills, but now there are a lot more of them. So I think that's a key difference. Depth, incredible. So, Tainu out in the middle of the field, takes it up. Oh, that is a big hit from Schwalke's head. Onto Cox Edge. Felt that from here. She's still down. Cox Edge. It's Huriana Manuel. It's a little bit of a half break. Loses the ball there. Jesus is getting full on this contest. No matter the scoreboard, it'll run. Good little handoff to Seal. It's the first time we've really seen Seal with the ball. Pick and go. Blackout, three blackouts. Three blackouts. Everyone's attacking these rocks. Just a small meters being pitched out from the Australian team. Maynard. Never juggled by the captain. The Smith, as always, is there. Look at that, Everett. Holding her up. Just pops out the back. No place for the faint-hearted. If you don't like the physical stuff, you shouldn't be watching this because it's full on. Some of those hits that are coming in have been terrific. And the impact from Schwalger, she's an angry lady that's been in the bin for 10 minutes. And she's come back and made an instant impact. It's cost the snores of uh, Kendra Coxedge as well. This is it. Look at this. Bang. There. Oh. She's looking for the ball there. You can see she's trying to be aggressive at the ruck, but uh, wow, Cox Edge went straight down. Well, Schwelga had her head down. She didn't know Cox Edge was there. But 
I bet you she's got a hard head. She's a oh. <laughs> and a swelga. Please. <laughs> she's been good tonight, though, hasn't she, guys? On that swelga. She's been intense. She's been fiery. She's been strong. She's left from the front for this Wallaroo team. Didn't take a backward step. Good to see. Yeah, her Smith has been good in the open side flank. And I really like this Nita Maynard, the young 21-year-old halfback. Just off to the left from Hooson. Encouragement from the sidelines. They're showing plenty of guts, Australia. The score only 11-3. Lavave, the sister of Philly Lavave, the hurricane. Right on the halfway line, taken by Hewson. Up and under. Ellie once again spills it. Not having a great day out of the high ball, so Winniata has to get back and clean it up. Oh, was there advantage? There wasn't knocked forward. Australia's asking for the scrum, and Woody has got on with it. Evades the first. Oh. Unfortunately, a mistake from the Black Ferns. Well, you can hear the words there from Burroughs, the 36-year-old hooker. Look where we are. She screams at her forward pack. This is where we want to be. And the Australians want to score as well to close their deficit. Well, a brush, rush of blood to the head for Salika Winniata. Don't know why you want to rush it there. It's nearly half time. You consolidate. You don't need that. Will you go long? Make Australia go back deep, but she didn't. She's turned it over. And now, here's the mistake from Ellie, the second one. I'm sure she'll go there again. So the fullback, Ashley Houston. Well, I like the formation the Australians have, and CO's been effective when she has had the rare opportunities of getting ball in hand, but it all comes down to the set piece and the solid scrum. Moving too much. Slip Unstable. of the bind. Slip of bind. We're going to reset. Great game, Mel. It is a good game. I just like how Australia, a team, you know, with, with so many new players, has come here. Crouch. With no fear of this New Zealand team. Well, that Ford pack's taking some angry pills today. <laughs> for the Australian Rugby Union to give this side a few more test matches as they switch. Go to the left, Hewson looks for an offload, decides to take it into contact. Keep it on the blind side with Smith. Busy with the ball, turnover. Affected by Sabritsby, enough for Dully, but the Wallaroos clean it up. And are so close to the line here. So close, the Fords take it on the left. Looking up here, it's Meskill, the captain, Denison, driving backwards, Maynard, the shooter. Short ball, they're over the line. Can she get it down? Hold up. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Well, it was Maynard, and I was hoping that she was going to get it. That's half time. Oh, the refs made a decision on that, Mel. Maynard's gutted about it. Need to have another look at it. Well, look at Houston. She stepped off the right, and then she got tackled here. Made sure she popped it up. Maynard was there. That's the tackle, and she rolls. She says she got it down. Ref's in a very good position. She said she didn't. Well, unfortunately, the Wallaroos unable to capitalise there on getting over the line. The halftime score 11 3, but let's go down to the sideline where Carlton Anna is. Well, Huriana, good defence here on the line. You needed it, though. Yeah, um, definitely when it gets close to our line, we've got to defend it like it's our home. And I think um, that's what we did in the dying seconds of that um, first half. Did you expect Australia to be that dogged? They've been putting a lot of pressure, especially at the breakdown. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, we, they've got a pretty big forward pack and we knew that they were going to bring it to us. And I think we've done a pretty good job um, stopping them from scoring their last try. All right, good luck for the second half. Eh? Thank you.
So it's half time in the International Women's Rugby Series Test Match 1 between New Zealand and Australia. The Black Ferns leading 11 points to 3. Great to have you with us in Aotearoa. It's the International Women's Series, the first of four tests for the Black Ferns. Tonight it's against Australia, 11-3 at half time. Let's check in with the Black Ferns coach, Brian Evans, to see what he made of that first 40. Well, coach, 11-3 up. Are you happy? Uh, not really, no. We're quite frustrated at the moment. A lot of personal errors and mistakes. Um, but we started getting some things together, so line-out's good, scrum's good, so if we can get a bit of territory and keep that up, hopefully we'll start doing some good things. They've really been putting some pressure at the breakdown, really testing the leather of the raw there too? Yeah, they are. They're, they're doing very well, and they're giving a bit of a bath at the breakdown, so we need to tighten up on that. So we had a good talk at half-time, so hopefully things will start going our way. All right, I'll let you get back up top. Good luck, Coach. Cheers, thank you. Houston gets the second half underway. It's a big kick taken by number eight, Robertson. She goes forward. Fox edge to roll. Looking for a bit of territory. The Black Ferns. Oh, and it's a tricky bounce. And they get the ball back with Winniata. Oh, that was definitely off it. She's off her feet. What's the referee doing there? Anyway, Australia, play on. Yeah, the big question for me was, are they coming through the gate as well? You can see the New Zealanders coming through the side there, but it's the golden rule of rugby. And you'll know that, KT, in the back three. You don't let it bounce, do you? And the Australian players, the back three, just let it bounce, and New Zealand had an opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly right, Willie. Because the ball can bounce anyway, and if you catch it on the full leash, you're in the box seat, and Australia were lucky to get away with that. Lovely recovery, too, from Houston. She's been very good tonight. As Houston, that's the part there. The challenge is all right. Then you can't play the ball because that's a ruck, and you can just see the New Zealand hands coming in there. Bit of a lottery. Line out. Once again, the Wallaroos lose the ball with that set piece. Kick over the top, and Houston has to chase, but might have gone too far from Cox Edge. Dribbles over. Well, they'll come back for the scrum where she kicked it, and it's not a good kick from Cox Edge. She's a better player than that, and on that occasion, maybe the conditions of not reading the win, but they need to keep ball in hand. Obviously, the coach Carl Tanana spoke to, he said that they need to be a bit more accurate, but two kicks. One was good, the second not so good. Well, Just Sorry, Mel, we just had a change for the Black Ferns at halftime. In Jersey 18, Alicia Nelson's on for uh, number three, Stephanie, to a Heidi Fox. Nelson from the Kaihu Valley Rugby Club up in Northland. She has to drive all the way from Northland down to Auckland for club training during the week. Committed. Maynard. Ormsby sitting in the pocket. Bit of a rough pass, and Wallaroo's having to run it up well behind the advantage line. And Campbell on the ground doesn't release. Well, you know who we're going to talk about because we highlighted her in the first 40 minutes, and it's the open side flanker for the Black Ferns. Linda Aitunu made her debut against the World 15. Boy, she's class. She is just all class. You can't, can't fault her. Knows the rules. She's so good on defence, and they're on attack, turning a, a situation really on defence onto attack. Well, the key about Aitunu, she used to play number eight for the Black Ferns, but having spent time in that New Zealand Sevens camp, and now she's a fully paid professional athlete, her body type's changed, so she is more mobile now, and probably quicker than she was, so it's probably why they're playing her at open side. Great decision. Edge drills it through. That's her third penalty she's kicked tonight. She's missed just one shot at goal. The Black Ferns go to 14 points to three. Very unusual setup, KT. You alluded us to it earlier that Ormsby stands in the pocket there, and then the pass she threw across the field. Well, it wasn't great, was it? KT must be getting a pie. 
<laughs> no, it's easy to defend there, Willie, when they uh, when they, she does, does stand back there, and that's why it turns out with a pile of pressure. Well, it's a replay of what happened when we restarted the first half. Robertson took it up, and a box kick from Coxedge. A run from Butler. Debutant. Kick through from Houston. Peppering Alley's wing, who has dropped every ball that's come her way tonight, and she does another. Well, they've identified. Alley's not too feeling, not too confident under the high ball. She's dropped all three, and Houston is just peppering her. She's Terrific contact with the boot. Look at that. She's keeping her eye on the ball, on the ball, and then just there. She usually plays first five either for New Zealand or Waikato. Young athlete, 21 years old. Crouch! Five! No, come on up. I need a longer bind. You're okay? Longer bind? It's not a big hit that's going in there, no. is it? It's the pressure that comes in after they come together. Well, you can see the pressure there from the loose head, Wilton from New Zealand. Crouch! Find! Oh, this is a mess. Okay. Nice and steady. Nice and steady. Come on, guys. Let's reset. Reset this. Let's go, girls. Nice and tough. Let's hope none of those people that complain about the resets in Super Rugby are watching this right now. Crouch. Five. Set. Squeeze. So this time, the ball goes in nicely. And Butler comes off, gives it to Maynard. Quite slow. Smith involved again. Everyone's off their feet there. Complete mess. Ball's nowhere to be seen. Just at the back, just popped out there. They've got to pick that ball up, Australia, and go for it, and they do. Not for much reward, though, so finally they go out to Ormsby. It's a kick in behind Ali. But it goes out on the fall. No. Well, they're not going to get easy metres close to the ruck there. They need to try and spin it out wide. I like Sio and Campbell in the midfield for Australia, but they've had very little quality ball to actually use. Good. Well, one's played Cooper's cousin, and the other is the sister of Eels star, Thank you. Chin Sio. So they've got the pedigree for sure. Blackburn's like team likes to maul the ball up. Out to Sabrinsky Nafatali, he's done a good job at first five so far. Hotsedge, oh, near intercept there. Nata Ari Namate has it. Number four. And offside, Australia, Clough. Easy to see that uh, the coach wasn't happy with the clean out from the Black Ferns and they've been really accurate in the opening seven minutes of the second half. Their body positions are so much better. They're clearing it. And Cox here just getting a nice ride, as she should, for a quality halfback. This is all a build-up, of course, to the Women's Rugby World Cup held in Paris from the 1st of August to the 17th. New Zealand have four test matches over the next 14 days. Yep. Australia down to 14, their captain Dennison getting some treatment off screen, and so they're going to have to try and defend this line out. Good take there, Blackwell. Oh, it was Navave. So, New Zealand, ball in hand, Sabritsby, Tullet. Really attacking breakdowns. Everett. She's got support there. Big line up to the right here. The Black Ferns are good little cut between Robertson and Coxedge. Ball goes out now. 
to Nelson. Still there for New Zealand. Big hit from Roll. Ball spills out. So Australia's tenacity tells as their captain leaves the field. First and black. Uh, take a bow, Australia. You can't question your commitment in defence tonight. It's been outstanding. There's just been very few breaks. The tackles that they've missed, somebody has actually picked them up. So on the stat sheet, it shows that they've missed 11. But have a look at this rule coming in. One of the smaller players, Ormsby. Down. Some changes, KT. Here's a few of them too. You never uh, get a principal angry. So Brian Evans has gone to the bench hard. Uh, Fa'amo Sueli is on in jersey 16. Aroha Savage on in jersey 19. Justin Lavia on in jersey 20. And also Renee Wycliffe on in jersey 22. Well, Mel, you mentioned it in the intro. They're rolling out the hip big guns now. All the experience coming from the bench. Yeah, if you're all Farmacilla, she is the captain of the Black Ferns. She is a powerful hooker, very much like Kevin Mialamo in, in his heyday. Loves to run the ball up. So the captain, Denison, gone off and Gray has taken her position, Molly Gray. She was good, wasn't she? She was Nata good. Aringa Mate. Good debut for the, uh, for the Black Ferns. She'd be very proud of what she's achieved. And Australia with the lost lineouts. One was costly in particular. There, they lost that one there. Just pulled down. And that one there led to a try. So just the breakdown of communication from Australia there. The line out, the timing is not right. I'm sure that's something they spoke about at the break. So a bit of a break in play here. Wait for the injured player to get her hand wrapped up. Black Ferns, of course, in the World Cup in August will play Samoa. Canada, apologies, they will play Kazakhstan first up the opening game, then Ireland in the United States. Their pool and the Wallaroos are in pool C. They play Wales, South Africa, and the hosts France. French team will be a very difficult prospect. Well, she's standing in a better position now as the first five almost week in the traditional position as opposed to straight behind the scrum. So he's hoping they can get a good solid foundation and get the ball to the classy midfield. Well, they've hardly gone wide at all. So Ormsby, one, two, cut, but she's taken care of by La Viet. Flanker who's come on. Aitunu helps her out in that mall, but Australia have got the push on. Good metres. Nice ball. Short hit there. Burrows. Continuing to attack. This is better work from the Wallaroos. But Smith hit hard by Manuel. Oh, throws it to nobody. That's a good clean up there. Going wide still, Hewson. Reverts back to the kicking game. Winniata misjudges it. Yeah, play in front of the ball. Had to be, and uh, well, it's, it's worked effectively for them tonight. Houston is just so classy at putting that ball up in the air. They tested Ali a couple of times, and this time it was Winniata. Couldn't control it. Australia will get to drive play even further into the Black Ferns' half. Yeah, every time Houston's got the ball, though, Willis has never looked to pass it out. He's just looked straight to kick it up high. She gets a lot of height, but. Winniata, I'm not surprised because she's not the tallest fullback going around, so it is a good option. Yeah, Brian Evans will be concerned about that kick receipt game. But then, with very little time in camp before this test match, can excuse a little bit of rustiness. Burrows. This time, it goes straight to Clough, and they get their own line-out ball. Stationary though. Blackburn's doing a good job here of defending them all. Now 
Australia get a little bit of traction through Schwelger. Who's trapped? Now it's picked up. Really getting close to the try line now. About 15 metres out. This is good defence from the Blackburn. See Linda Aitunu there, making a nuisance of herself and affecting the turnover. And Coxedge knew no one was back there. It's a kick through. Houston. Good take. Nice pass out. Here's Wycliffe. Renee Wycliffe, the seven star. Continuing just to put boot to ball here, New Zealand. Oh, good chase, Miniata. And she pulls Haynes down under all kinds of pressure, Hay. And check that out from Lavia Flanker. New Zealand have it. They've got numbers out wide here. Just need to get the pass right for Everett. And Everett goes over for the first try of the second half. And a Take nice a cap. Fantastic yeah. work, wasn't it? Take a bow to the Black Ferns. You took the right options every time the kick from Houston on this occasion didn't work that was the initial turnover by Aitunu and then they kicked the ball away but Houston kicked it back to them and once they got it they knew they had numbers that's the money ball the one that's gone out wide and then it's just a matter of just offloading and Everett has been terrific on defense tonight and she's rewarded with the second try you want to come down also from the run on the right hand side of the field by Renee Whitcliffe going on the wing replacing Nelly she put it through and it was a great chase by the fullback. Salika Winiata, she might not be the tallest, but she's got all the heart chase as well. She's the one that basically affected their turnover, gave the Black Ferns that opportunity to get it wide, which they did. They were good enough to convert. Great try. That is the kind of rugby you want to see from the Black Ferns. Lovely, lovely timing there from Coxedge. New Zealand starting to pull away a little now. And we've seen some impact from the bench as well. Lavia, who's just come on, her impact in the 20 jersey as a loose forward. But as you mentioned, Wycliffe making the right decision with the kick and chase. Emma Jensen warming up on the sideline. And a couple of changes here now for the Australian team. Uh, Marga Watson's on in jersey 16. Also Caroline Bakalahi on in jersey 17. And also Kanina Tarita in jersey 23. Let's see what they can do. This time the kick goes shorter. And Sabretsby Fatali. Good kick. Oh, Butler. Very messy work at the back there. Haynes has to help her out and look at the numbers there for New Zealand. Oh, unlucky. Yeah, I think that Butler might be play, might be buying Haynes a lemonade tonight. That's your classic room 412 of Rotorua Hospital. A hot potato, good chase for New Zealand, and then they just didn't support their own body weight. Boy, the intensity certainly has picked up from the New Zealanders since they're trying. Yeah, good basics from the Wallaroos throughout this test match. But unfortunately, they're not playing enough rugby. But it'll vary what they do out there. Four, five. Four, straight. Back up, numbers. However, the Black Ferns had too many players in the line out. So here's an opportunity. Good run from Vatalahi. There's another one from Schwelger. Oh, good impact. Lavia. <laughs> Bit of a dummy from Smith. Gee, this black wall, there's just no way through it for the Wallaroos. Look at their line speed. Schwelger hit behind that advantage line. They had a bit of an advantage there. Houston, if she had a looked out wide, as Manuel come up, 
out of the line. Short ball to Seal. This is good work from the Wallaroos. Yes. Big blast on the whistle as well. Aroha Savage. Yep. 19 there, she's pointing out. Some of the defence coming in from New Zealand is ferocious, but Australians equal to the challenge. Interesting decision here to actually take a shot at goal. Look at this hit here. There's Lavia straight in on Schwalger. Here comes another one. Bit of that. Outside in from Gudiana Manuel. She's so good at timing that. <laughs> Yeah, Justine Lavier, the number 20 for New Zealand. She's a regular starter, usually at open side, actually. 75 NPC appearances for Auckland. And she first played for New Zealand in 2004, so been around for quite some time. And for the Black Ferns, Mal Ruth Mackay's snuck on there in Jersey 17. She's replaced uh, Kathleen Walton. tonight she's got the Midas touch as the open side flanker for New Zealand the fend off was beautiful and then the awareness of getting it out into space Wycliffe's got a lovely touch and a lovely right hand boot as well there's nothing that Houston could do but kick it into touch yeah she's always playing up in the front line isn't she actually Houston so there's opportunities here and full of water roost Alicia Hewitt's jumped on in Jersey 19 uh, replacing Troy Butler and there she is uh, Emma Jensen our touch partner now on Jersey uh, 21 replacing Kendra Coxage and Jersey 9. Yep, she made you look stupid. So, ball taken at the front. Not of a time, goal one. Again, certainly the Black Ferns go to tonight. And Blackwell with eight take. Oh. It is the advantage to New Zealand. So, they look to go out wide. Nice ball. Oh, play on, Ruth. Oh, Look at that. Too early. Way too early. Oh, she saw a forward pass, so that's why she's called it back. Great drive from the Black Fern forward pack. They brought it down, and then they just asked questions of the Australian defence. They couldn't hold on. And so one of them snuck around the side and gave away the penalty, which is the reason the ref has brought it back. But you saw that clearly, Mel, the difference between New Zealand and Australia. When New Zealand win clean ball, they're prepared to give it some width and use their players coming in at different angles. Australia, it's laboured, it's slow, and the midfield have hardly had any chances. Money ball. Got the ball going on with Silly at the back. Look at that body position, and they're so close. Are they over? Not quite. Just half a metre short here, New Zealand. Jensen digs in, finds it. Oh, look at that rush defence from Australia. Getting it out wide now, New Zealand. The ball is out to the right wing ahead of me. Tries to use her power to go over. She is over the line, but can she get it down? Time's out. Time's out. She thinks she's got it. Tarita was the girl that got underneath and tried to hold her up in Jersey 23. Yeah, I couldn't see, I couldn't see grounding see either. either. Okay. That's probably a good decision as well. Tarita certainly was there. What a scramble by Australia to get out there because they certainly had the numbers. The dummy cut from Manuel initially 
meant that there were players that were out wide. And then there, stretching. Talitha's done very well, but uh, you'd be the judge at home. It looked like she got it down from that replay. But they don't have TMOs and they don't have a big screen. Well, I thought Farmer Silly actually, when she broke away initially, because they had momentum from the line out, she could have scored that if she just stayed in the boot. But she peeled off and that's where they got caught. Just a little bit short, but the backs have done brilliantly with the recycled ball. Have a look here. There's Manuel coming in the cut there, which stopped a couple of the players, and that's where they got it wide. That pass there, maybe because it went a little bit high. They scrambled in time. Set. Oh, well, Tuna's gone back to number eight. Ball was in the back. What are you calling here, KT? What, you, what move do you call here with all the backs out wide? We're going to well, move infield. Well, the backs have got a short line. They're very compact, so it looks like it might be a bit of deception. Everyone hitting the line and putting players in motion. We've got Salika Winiata directly in behind Huriana Manuel there. Got Renee Wycliffe, who's got some great fit, feet there in Jersey 22. I think you get the ball out to her as quick as possible. Crouch. Huriana Manuel, Salika Winiata. Teammates in the sevens game. Eight nine winger. Eight nine in the corner. Alright. So Paul has it. Gives a short ball to Whitcliffe. And it's a pop off her shoulder to Winiata. That was simple and beautiful. The third try for the Blackburns. Well there she is. The policewoman from Manawa 2 from Palace the North. And the police won again. The good guys won again. The good girls. She ran a beautiful line, but what it was, it was poetry in motion because the way the ball moved and they had players that were in different angles, the Australian defence, they were looking at who was coming at different angles here. They push it wide and look at the different angles that the New Zealanders are running. The short ball halfway through, Winnie Arthur is there on the shoulder. Great reward. Yeah, well, the deception is Huri Manuel at centre, bounces out wide. She goes into the winger position to have Winnie Arthur, Renee Wycliffe coming in straight. Wycliffe was the one that actually got the ball from the first five. She was the one that poked through the hole, gave the nice little right-hand pass to Winiata, and as a good fullback should do, be right on the hip. It's all about timing, and she deserves it. She's been one, or near the one of the best for the Black Ferns tonight. Oh, she's a try-scoring machine. It's her 50th first-class try. She's only the third New Zealander to do that for the Black Ferns. So Emma Jensen unable to convert that. Good score now. Black Ferns 26 points to three. You just look at those holes they're running into. The Australian defence just unable to number up the fullback coming in short. Another change here for the Wally Ruse uh, here. Now uh, Alexandra Salusi's on in Jersey 22, replacing Trisha Brown on the right wing. And they've both played for the Australian Sevens team. Salusu, big and powerful. Everett. This is clean work so far from the Black Ferns in the second half. Rule. Jensen. Nicely placed. Oh, just over the line, was it? Or? And that'll put a smile on the face of Brian Evans, the coach of New Zealand, because after you've scored points, you want to make sure that the kickoff is accurate, and that's exactly what they did. Set play, another set play, and then get it into touch. And this is an area the Black Ferns have been attacking all night. Didn't contest that time. Oh, big tackle. Ormsby hit hard by Levere. 20. Just didn't roll away out of the tackle area. Just what, team a, what a player to bring off the bench, though. Immediate impact. She's just come on and put her imprint on this match with her defence. Ormsby wasn't even looking up, but she must have felt like she ran into a black wall, a bus. Well, how's that, though? Will you get love here? You can cut people in half. You get Aiton, who can <laughs> take people's heads off of it. How good is that for the Black Fern, that back row? <laughs> Oh, stolen at the front there. And Everett was there to clean it up. Good ball out. Nice 
work from the Black Ferns and the Savage. Now they go out wide. Manuel, nice little ball up to Rawl. Rawl decides to cut back in, find some support. Jensen. Three Black Ferns chasing hard here, so tucson has got a job to do. She doesn't panic. Nice work for Brixby, Nafa Dalet. Really starting to hum these backs. Now, he's hitting me with a little bit of space. Gets the ball off to Everett. He's savage. Unable to keep it in play, though. Skill level is fantastic from the Black Ferns, giving it plenty of width. And the kick is only as good as its chases. And every kick that the Black Ferns have applied in the second half, they've had tremendous chase. Here's the last part of it. Everett and Savage just trying to keep the ball in, but you can see her right leg just touching the line. You can just hear the applause. That's for Salika Winiata, the last try scorer. She's had her leave, and Haley Tip later hurrying on in Jersey 23 for the Black Ferns. Takes the fullback role. So Margaret Watson throwing in. Experienced player, debut back in 2006. Just hitting the line, they're just bringing it up so far behind the advantage line, Rollerous. Lose possession. Smith just went to her, off her feet a little bit too early there. Well, she got isolated, and the New Zealanders, it's just too easy. Straight over the ball, no one's coming to clean you out, so you get an opportunity to grab the ball. You can't, you just can't do that. You can't go too far there to be isolated. And I think it's Savage up and over the ball, all rights to it. Wasn't supporting her own weight, though. There's no other than that. So, once again, the drive goes on. Nice ball. Plenty of yards. Good short ball, good wrap around. There's Tipolady Herring, she gets it out of Whitcliffe. What can Whitcliffe do? Beautiful footwork there for Whitcliffe. Just pulled in by the Wallaroo defence. So, Brett's been off of Tully. And at the breakdown. And it's Nelson. Is she over? On the line, held up. Just on the line. Yeah, Farmer Silly yeah, actually there and had plenty of support and behind her as well. Alicia Nelson. What about the work of Smith there? The open side flanker for Australia. Once again, committing her body and getting in between the ball and the ball carrier in the ground. Australia dodge another bullet. Maybe not for long, though. So here's Whitcliffe. Square. Zealand Sevens player. Good tackle from Ornsby. She's had to do that all day. And here's Nelson with the drive. Yep, there was Farmer Seeley on top of her. Beautiful body position and scrum. Matunu. Smith put the pressure on. And they've lost it. Well oh, done, Australia. You've defended magnificently every time you've been called on, and to just break down the communication there between Itunu and also Justin Levere. Itunu wanted to go right, Levere was coming to support her. They basically collided, so that's just those things get worked out the longer you play together and in camp, and obviously moving from the open side to the number eight position. I'm sure she didn't spend too much time there this week. There. Brixby, and Nafa Dalet is 
Manuel really injects. Out again, recycled. Nelson. Good work from Jensen getting to that breakdown. Well, it's been, I can tell he's been attacking with the ball in hand a lot more second half. Here's McKay. Quick ball. Rule. Takes on the defence. Another good pick and go. It's Fatima Silek. Definitely off their feet there, the Wallaroos, and they've been penalised for it. Looking to go wide here with Tipolata Hurin. Oh! Evades the tackler, though. She's slippery like an eel. Savage, big friend. And a roll. Getting ever so close to the try line again now, New Zealand. Going through the middle. Ball is so fast. Looking to go wide, here's Manuel. Uses her footwork, gets it out to Hedemann. She looked for the offload, but kept it in. Manuel. So Brett's been up at Dalek. That's it, Everett. Another close intercept there. Aitunu. Good work getting that ball away. Savage. Nelson goes through. 11 phases, in fact, there were 12, and the referees giving it a big blast that goes into her pocket, so someone's not going to finish the game. That's Alicia Hewitt being shown the yellow card. Discipline an issue. The Wallaroos at times. Well, there's been some magnificent skills shown by the black ferns the little offloads the around the corner passes and things like that. there she is just couldn't help herself and she's pulled a player down and then she just dives in there again the referee says i've had a guts for you get in the bin i like the width though willie that new zealand are playing with especially in the second four they really have stretched the defense of the wallows who've been good in that department they haven't given up but here's a prime opportunity here for new zealand to strike again with a set piece move match fixing but I think Manuel will score we'll see short ball there from Manuel really good work getting it out wide again there's Rule big ball to hit him at as she goes over finally honey hit him at it's the fourth try now for New Zealand uh, she was in Moscow last year with the New Zealand Sevens team that won the title of world champions and she's just a class finisher but it all came from very simple basic set piece the scrum was good Manuel came back on a lovely angle which set the ruck and then here's the money ball that one there that's a beautiful pass by rule out in front never going to be stopped KT well that's the advancement you were speaking about earlier on in the piece Willie just the skill base of this New Zealand Black Ferns team really has gone over and above any other team in the world at the moment. That's purely for the fact that a lot of these girls are in the seven system. They're able to do those 20 metre passes left to right, which is a hard thing to do a lot, a lot of the time. That's your weak side. And these girls are putting it on the money. Don't forget, this is the first test match of four for the Black Ferns. Next up, they're playing the curtain raiser to the All Blacks. The 7th of June, Saturday night at Eden Park, playing Manu Sina. Not a bad effort. 31 to 3 now, New Zealand. Really starting to hum late into this match. Yeah, the Wallaroos here are just uh, emptied their bench. Now Liz Putty's on in Jersey 18, replacing uh, Schroeder. And also uh, in Jersey 21, Ashley Masters is on, replacing uh, number 9, Maynard. Handling errors will be the problem that um, I'm sure Brian Evans will discuss during the week. 11 made by New Zealand only six to Australia but it's the missed tackles that have really hurt the Australian team 17 in total taken that error 
error, but unfortunately, Sir Brixby Nuffertelli nearly made the mistake. But she's come out not too bad. Oh, you kidding and me? Can't do anything wrong. That is brilliant. That is not easy to do, ladies and gentlemen. She trapped it like a soccer ball and she picked it up and it's calm as you like. She's belted at 60 metres. Only her second test match tonight too. Looking like a veteran. New Zealand have knocked it on. So Australia have it. Oh, lose it in contact there. Aitunu there. Just dribbles it through. Jensen. Good enough for the task there, Haynes. Look at this great work, Farmer so powerful. Just looking for a header mat. Off the shoulder of Sibrit's been up to it. Rule. Just looking at her options. Gets it back up to Jensen. Manuel gets the dummy on the inside. And she's rewarded for all of her hard work tonight, Manuel. A very good try. Well, I won't say I told you so, but I did say she'd score a try, didn't I? It was supposed to happen earlier. And Manuel, she has done all of the hard work and deserves it as well. She looks to the heavens. And it was all about the execution. They took the right options. The grubber kick in behind really had the Australians scrambling. This was the start of it. The set piece and this beautiful kick, the clearance. The line-out didn't work. And then just look at the calmness of rule here she got into space and she didn't panic she just waited held the ball up jensen then found manual and shut the gate she's too big and strong yep good heads up play it's when you look up you judge what's in front of you and you use your instincts new zealand is doing that very well Seven unanswered points in the second half. Four tries, and more importantly, now the combinations are starting to come along. And you know, for me, it's been the impact from the bench. No disrespect to the ones that started, but boy, the work of Farmer Silly, Nelson, Savage, Levere, and Jensen. So, a couple of minutes to go. All bounces high. Houston shakes up the dummy. Looking for the blind side here, Patu. Powerful pop. No. Tucker. She's not going to change her mind. <laughs> this is better from Australia. The clock gets driven back. It's great. Masters. It's a bit of a spin there from Haynes. Well, they're, never, they're not giving up Australia. And that's great to see. Good defence there from McKay. Ormsby. Up to Gray. New Zealand all over it like a rash. But illegally. Love the Australian attitude, throwing everything at it, but it's always it's simple to defend because it's just one-off runners. Unlike New Zealand that used a lot of width, got the ball out wide and had decoy runners, this is just simple to defend against. Bit of confusion there, I think Houston wanted to go for the post, but come on, full-time whistle. You called shot. You called shot. You can't. So there you go, in the end, New Zealand totally dominant in that second half. Performance they'll be happy with for sure, 38 points to three. New Zealand have never lost to Australia and they retain the Laurie O'Reilly Memorial Trophy.